Okay, so welcome to part three. Uh, today we're going to start making the cone um, for the top. I've got a bit of lightweight plate here, it's about 0.8mm, something like that. Um, now I used to be able to develop these cones piece of cake, but I've forgotten how to do it. So I went online and you just put in your height, your bottom size and your top size and it prints out a template. And I've transposed it onto the sheet and I'm going to go and try and cut it out. It's, it's pretty thin so I should be able to do it fairly easily with uh, my tin snips. So let's give it a go, although these aren't particularly sharp. I might end up using my um, knife that I put on the, the anvil. I'm having a bit of trouble holding this. I can't grip it, that's the trouble. It's blasted hand. I can squeeze with the right hand, but I can't grip it well enough with the left to, to sort of push it into it. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to cut that out with the, uh, the knife. Right, cut it out, and next thing we've got to do is fold it up. So I'm going to use, um, I've got like a little, uh, I don't know what you call it, it's like a mini anvil that goes in the swage block. Anyway, I'll show you, this, this is it. It's like a very thin anvil. So I'm just going to break the first edge over with a rubber mallet and then just continue trying to knock it round. I'd like a little pair of um, sort of like model makers rolls for doing this sort of stuff but of course you can't have all the tools you want. You see it's starting to bend round. I might actually be able to do it by just gently pulling it rather than hitting it. But again, like with the the top part of the hood, I don't really want to get too many sort of flat spots and kinks in it. It's almost unavoidable doing it like this, but we'll see. Might be able to knock them out actually. See, it's coming up, but you can see the sort of like slight lines in it which I don't really like but I say it's almost unavoidable break the other edge over right so I think I'm just gonna keep pulling it around by hand a little bit till I get it somewhere near and then once I can get it Sort of the edges to close up. I want to get some tacks on it, and then I can sort of hammer it around a bit more once the tacks are on it, because it it sort of it's much easier once you've got it all tacked into shape. See that is coming, but not quite there. I think the best way to put this on here. I'm surprised how tough this is actually. It's only I say it's 0 0.8. But it's it's pretty tough stuff. But we're getting there. I want it to I want it to last, so I don't want to go too thin. So you get the idea, we're sort of almost there, but not quite. So I'm just gonna try and get some of these flats out if I can. The, uh, the mallet. It's not having much effect, I don't think. I think I need one slightly more solid. This is actually quite um, a soft hammer. But it's a little bit better, I think. Yeah, not too bad. I'm going to take a bit of constant hammering to try and get the worst of them out. You can see them there and the, the light shows them up quite badly. But uh, I think we will be able to get 
a lot of them out. It's just time, it's sort of taking your time. It's feeling a little bit better. Uh, still not quite closed up enough, but you can see the top is a, a slightly better shape now. Alright, I've sort of pulled it close as I can. I've ground off the coating on this because it's one of those, it's sort of, a bit, I don't know if it's galvanised or Zintec or something or other. I've ground the coating off and I just want to get a few tacks on it so that then we can um, sort of put it round a bit better. It's really thin stuff to be um, trying to mig up, but you can see I've got it clamped onto a bit of tube, so I've got sort of a bit of backing on it, so that hopefully it won't burn through too badly. A nice shot at the back of my head. Just getting a few tacks all the way up it. That's got it. We'll try and fill the, the gaps in and then get it all ground off. It's literally a case of just keep spotting it until everything's welded up. Sort of filled it up. It's not pretty by any stretch of the imagination. Just one little blob on the end there, I think. Fill up a little cavity. I say it ain't pretty, but we'll grind it off. And I'm not going to grind it off fully. I just want to take the worst of it off so that I can hammer it a little bit. Got the worst off. See, that's I've left a little bit on there, a little bit to play with. Right, let's see if we can take it back to my stake. And this time, I'm going to use a slightly heavier, or not slightly heavier, slightly more solid hammer. This is the one I use for my shoeing, and the the red end's quite soft, and the black end is really quite hard much harder than the other one. It's a real hard plastic. I've had it for years. I, I'm surprised it hasn't worn out, but it, it, it really lasts well. I bought it from Buck and Hickman um, many years ago, and you, the, the ends are interchangeable. So you buy the hammer with, without any ends in, and, and you buy the ends to suit your needs. And this black one is actually doing the trick much better than it did with the softer one. It's taking the, the lines out much nicer. And with it being already tacked together it can't sort of go anywhere. It's It's got to either go in a circle or providing you continue to run around evenly it should remain in a circle. Um, hopefully. That's the theory anyway. We'll soon find out. Feeling a little bit better. Much better. It's almost round. It's not quite round where the, the weld is, which is to be expected. But uh, I'm sure we can work on that one way or another. But it's, it's much nicer than it was. It's just patience, really, a lot of this. Um, you know, I'm going to spend a bit of time on this before it's finished. Just I want to get as many 
the lines out as I can but you can see that's much better than it was right so now I've got that bit done this is the thing I flattened the other day and I just want to skim off the the front and put a tiny little uh, sort of register in it so that the cone um, sort of will sit in it I just want to make sure this is tight um, so that, yeah when it's all put together the cone actually sort of sits into it um, so it's, it's just as I say a little bit of a register I'm just gonna skim it off flat first sorry we're over in the dark side of the workshop again just whip that off the bottom of the jaws is catching on the top of the the uh, vice so I can't go across very far I don't quite know why that's doing that but let's try again we might just miss it yeah I think it might just just miss it if I turn that a little bit sharper that's it I only need a a tiny skim off it just to level it up. It's surprisingly level to be honest considering I've just beaten it with a hammer um, when it was hot. It's actually not that unlevel. But whilst it's up in here as well we'll put the register in and drill it. We'll drill it to the half inch bar. This time we want it to be actually fairly accurate. I want it to be quite tight on the bar so that when it's welded on it's not got too much of a gap. Now I've marked or I've taken the measurement with my vernier as to what diameter I need the little register. I can't actually see it so I'm trying to just mark it with my pencil as to where to that's it, just touched it with the pencil that's left a nice circle I'll measure it again make sure it's the diameter I wanted yep that's pretty good now if I just touch that with my tool right, the problem is this ain't going to go where I want it. It's not going to go in far enough. I was just going to try and use my little parting tool I've got there, but it's um, the parting tool's been set up spot on, so it obviously wasn't going to work. I'm going to quickly cut out that bit, and I've just put this big boring bar in. I'm going to try and just touch it with that. Although, <laughs> that doesn't seem to be working very well either because the boring bar is blunt. But it's, I think it is sort of marking it where I want it. But I don't think there's much of a register there. I think I'll have to try something else. don't quite know what other tools I've got. just want to check that it's the right width before I make it much bigger. Right, you can see I've just about got it in there. It was enough, so I've just left it. So I don't want a huge register, just enough so that uh, the top of the cone just sits in it when it's all tightened up together. And I'm just pushing that back in flat against the jaws to drill it, because if you don't, that'll probably push into the jaws as you're trying to drill it this way at least it won't just put a little bit of cutting fluid really good stuff this I think it's called CT90 this one that I'm using this particular one but there's loads of different ones out there use my centre bit I don't quite know how these work they're clever to uh, centre the holes 
lots of this engineering stuff I don't understand but hey ho it works it's all I need to know right pilot hole I think that's about a 5 sixteenth something like that stick that through as my pilot no it's probably a little bit less than 5 sixteenths it might be bigger than quarter can't remember now Unfortunately, I'm narrating this some days after I've done this, which is what I don't normally do. I normally try and narrate it straight after I've done it, so I can actually remember what I was doing at the time. But uh, things have just sort of got on top of me at the moment. I'm <laughs> being a bit lazy, and I was just too tired to do it the night that uh, I came home after I'd done this. So, as I say, I'm just trying to remember what I did. Now, this is the half-inch... Um, spot on half inch drill so hopefully this will be quite tight on the bar once I've drilled it I want to try and put um, a bit of a decent countersink in it as well so that when I weld it from the back or from this side I haven't got a massive um, lump of weld not that anyone's going to see it from this side because it'll be hidden, but I want to do it anyway. So I'll just put my countersink up. Give it a quick blast. That's all we need. And I think. As I recall, that's it. There you can see it, I think. Possibly. Oh, focus, 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 focus. Come on. Right, there you go. You can see there's a little register. Not much of one. Just enough for the cone to sit in. Like that. Just just got it so that when it's all put together the cone has to stay where it's put that's the theory anyway let's check that the bar is a decent fit yeah that's a nice fit that's tightish fit, it's not sloppy and that all goes together like that actually the, the uh, hook's going to go much further down than that if it'll go anyway, something like that when it's all put together cool, like that yep, cut it off see if we can run a die down it Before I cut it off, I'm just going to weld this on. Just hold it up there. Just hold it in place. So it hasn't got much play in it, but it might just pull a little bit. I'll just check that for straight. I'll run a quick bead around it. Turn it round. I'm on the other side. Just like that. Just give it a quick brush off. Get the Mac off. That'll do that'll do for me so it's not pretty but it's on it's nice and tight hopefully once that's all powder coated we won't get any uh, moisture or rust or anything coming down there right so this is how it's all going together 
I've got to cut this off about I don't know three quarters of an inch inch and uh, so I've got enough for a nut full of thread and a little bit sticking out that's the theory anyway let's get this cut off wonderful tool that is it's one tool I use so much alright I found a nut it looks like it's been there since God was a boy in my box but uh, covered in rust but it should do the trick alright just going to try and um, stick a thread on here plenty of lube this isn't the easiest of uh, dies to get started a half inch I, I seem to remember having trouble with these before I'm trying to pull down and twist at the same time but it it ain't having it look to see if it's level. It looks level but it, I don't think it's got it. It's not biting. No. It ain't gonna have it. I think either the die has had it because it's been kicking around for years and it's probably blunt or See, nothing or I could do with yeah that's either blunt or I could do with um, just putting a bit more of a taper on that what's it bit of a lead and that's what I've done and it's just started so that's all it needed it probably would have gone had the, the die been sharper um, but with it not being sharp it needed to sort of grasp it with a few more threads I think before it got going so I'll just put a bit more of a lead on it there's probably someone out there with a technical manual to tell me exactly what sort of a lead to put on it but I ain't interested so there you go it's hard work because I think as I say this die is pretty shot and it's a big pitch on the, on a Whitworth, so it's it's having to tear off quite a lot in one go. Um, that'll probably do it. Let's try the nut. It starts and it's gone tight. So either the thread wants adjusting, so I can you can do that with these. You undo the outside to, um, or the middle one and do up the outside too, it squeezes it up a little bit more so we can just take a little bit more thread off right a bit of a faux pas a good job I checked, the nut actually isn't half inch well it is half inch but it's not half inch Whitworth I think it's either NF or UNC or something similar but as you can see it ain't Whitworth so it's a damn good job I checked before I started tearing more off the thread. So let's go and see if I can find myself a proper half inch Whitworth nut. And there we go, I found one. Again, been in the box since God was a boy, but that one goes on much better. Look at that, perfect. Pleased I didn't tear the thread to pieces before I discovered that one. Right, so, next job, we've got to put it all together. So there we go, I've put the thread through with the cone and the, the uh, flattened ball and now we've got to do is just put a couple of tacks of weld across the nut just to hold it all in place so that you can unscrew the top without the nut disappearing down inside it. As you can see the cone's centred up quite nicely. It ain't perfect but it's, it's pretty good. So we'll get some weld around there and then that can be welded on top of there. 
And the next job will be to figure out how to fix the whole lot onto the bottom. So, I'll have to have a good think about that. But as usual, I'm sure it will come to me. So first of all, we'll just whack a bit of weld around this uh, nut. I'm only going to put a couple of tacks, one each side, because I don't want this thin sheet to distort too much, which it can do quite easily. Put too much weld on. So I'm literally just going to do two flats, which will be plenty. Sorry, phone's ringing. People, eh? All right. Another one on there. And that'll do it. That's plenty. That ain't going nowhere. Lovely job. It's come together quite nicely. Pleased with that. Not quite sure whether to put a bit of tube inside it so that it can't pull up. But phew, distort the base. But I don't think it can go too far because the thread's not very long. So now we can weld a whole lot together. I'm just going to sort of push down because it's slightly distorted and I'm not sure which is distorted, the the big hood or the the little square but either way I'm just going to try and get it to sit square while I get some tacks on it. Turn it round, it's be easier to hold it with my left hand. Well, I attack. It's got it. Pucker. Lovely. Nice, all fitting, snugly. So we'll get a few more tacks in it. I'm gonna put quite a few in, one in each corner, as well as uh, one on each side. I think. Just to make sure it's got it. You see at the moment I've just got one on the the four sides. But I think I will just make sure of it by putting one in each of the corners. Belt and braces. I don't want it falling apart. Not that I think it would, but you never know. It's been hanging up there for a hundred years, and as rust's got in, you never know. That's what I like about ironwork. Sometimes you think, you know, this could be, providing no one nicks it, it could be hanging outside this conversion for a hundred years or more. There you go, that's got it. That ain't going nowhere now. Yeah, so um, these jobs can outlast you. I figured out how to fix it. I'm going to put four holes, one on each of the sides, and then drop um, a little rod through with some paint on. Where it touches the sides, hopefully that will be where I can weld the nuts to fix it. So, <laughs> who knows, it might work. I'm just going to mark the centre with my Sharpie. Um, I want to get them somewhere near. And if I put it in the centre, they'll be hidden sort of behind the decoration. Not that I think you'll see it anyway, really. It's about four inches, so it's about eight inches overall, so yeah, it's about just under four inches, I think. Just put a little line there. I'll do the same on all the other sides. Oh, 
I think I'm just trying to think how many hours I've spent on this so far. Actually, this isn't going to be as long a series as I thought. Um, this could well be the last on the lantern itself, although we've got all the bracket and everything else to make. Um, although it won't be 100% finished. But um, I didn't expect originally to make such long videos. Um, I was going to do them slightly shorter, but they've actually worked out. It's just been, con well, not really convenience, it's just the way it's worked out. That I've done them around about sort of 35, 40 minutes of time. Um, I'm going to say I think that's going to probably do it for this first part with the actual lantern build. We've got all the bracket to make, and then once all everything's made, I'll do a last video of hopefully the whole thing up, all powder coated, wired up, glass glazed um, and working in situ with any luck so there's going to be still going to be quite a few parts left of this series with the bracket as well I'm actually struggling in my head how I'm going to do the bracket but hey ho we'll get over it as usual I should I should expect anyway there we go I've just um, made those holes not very big because I don't want much deviation. I've just put a bit of that uh, marker paint on the end of this welding rod and I'm just trying to go down as steady and as upright as I can until we just touch the inside of the hood and hopefully that paint is just going to put a little dab on the inside and if I'm clever I can hover my there we go hover my nuts over the top if you'll excuse the expression and weld them on I know it's a bit Heath Robinson it ain't very scientific and it may not work <laughs> Let's give it a go. What I've got is these roofing bolts, old fashioned roofing bolts, although they are M6. I did have some 316s, but I can't find them anywhere. So we're going to end up with the 6 mils, but no one's going to notice, to be honest. I wanted to try and keep it all imperial. Um, but at the end of the day, no one's going to really notice. Right, so I've got a pair of pliers and the nuts, they're these square nuts. I'm just going to hold it up against the side of the hood and look through the nut hole to see the dab of paint. That's, <laughs> that's how technical it is, lining this lot up. Let's give it a bit of a tap get it in place. Actually that tack didn't hold very well. Give it a squirt. I think that ain't bad. Looking down on it over the hole it doesn't look bad and it looks reasonably level. Let's go down a little bit but it ain't bad. It's not screwing in that one because I think I just slightly caught the thread. But never mind, I can run a tap through that. Get the next one lined up. Give it a little tack. I bet there's people out there screaming that I'm doing all this wrong, but like all my jobs, I like to learn as I go along. You know, you sort of figure things out, which is what I, I like.
doing. And I get home some nights and I'm actually quite tired, not through physical exertion, but would you believe through thinking about things, thinking how to do stuff. It really does sometimes try out the old grey matter. And it's not always the best way, but we get there. Might not even be the proper way, but it works. And we, as you, most of you know, <laughs> I do make mistakes along the way. But then my name. Come on, get this last one on. I want to see if this works. It's uh, it's going to be a long shot, but <laughs> you never know. That just moved there. Was the uh, old-fashioned ceramic bulb holder that I'm going to use to put in this. Um, it's brand new but it's it's sort of an old style. Um, I thought it would look quite nice inside there rather than a one of these new modern sort of plasticky things or even one of those modern brass ones. There you go, they're all tacked in. I'm just going to run a tap through them before I see if they'll fit but I'm just going to open up the holes as well in the bottom of that right so I've tapped them out I've opened the holes out in the uh, the top I think I've done them because they're six mil and I think I've done them about five sixteenths at the moment um, we might have to make them bigger but we'll We'll see. Obviously, the smaller you can do them, the the better. But we might need to open them up. These bolts are only just long enough. Literally, just going to get a nut full, which is actually sort of perfect. It wasn't planned. It's just the way it's worked out. I didn't even think about it, to be honest, how long the, the bolts needed to be. It's just coincidence. Look at that. They're all in. I've only done them up loosely to start with. Just got a couple of threads on, and then we can hopefully do them all up nice and tight. Look at that. Would you believe it? Pull them down tight. I don't want this because this is going to support be supporting all the glass and everything in from this bit. So look at that pucker. Pleased with that. You wouldn't have believed it, but it's worked. Just going to have to sand them off. All those marks. I don't want uh, too many more blemishes on it. Let's see if we can get all this to go together. Now this is struggling a little bit to get that to register for some reason. I don't quite know why. I don't know which bit is not right. But it doesn't seem to want to register. Has that got it? No. That's, has that got it? It'll suddenly click in. I think that's got it. There you go. So, there we go. That's about it for this lamp build because I've got a lot of boring cleaning up to do, um, sanding and wire brushing uh, and all the rest of it, then it'll go off to the powder coaters, then off to the glaziers, um, and by that time I should have made the, the bracket, so you'll get to see the bracket being made hopefully, 
and then the grand finale will be the whole lot all put together. So there you go. End of part three. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I hope it's inspired some of you to have a go. My first attempt hasn't turned out too bad. <laughs>